back before that is rarely ever open at this point. I think set would make the most sense here. Zoom has looked absolutely fantastic on it. The Trundle, actually, as they do hover, it is, has been a very highly contested pick for a lot of our junglers, though. Mm. Kanavi has looked absolutely stellar on it. No real bad matchups for the Trundle. Lee Sin can cause a little bit of a gripe for him, but definitely still a strong jungle pick for Kanavi. Well, Tien, he's played so much Lee Sin at this point, you think, may as well. Uh, that would be a bit of disrespect, because this is Kanavi's pocket pick made a bit more global with Kindred running back into the meta. I think it was more of a shout out there. So we will see the Lee Sin, at least in the early stages, can fight against this uh, this Trundle. But definitely, as this game starts to go on, Trundle just becomes too beefy, especially when he gets access to that subjugated to level 6. That's when this lane matchup will start to go over in favor of Kanavi. Still, though, a lot of support picks that can be available now for either of these sides. And still the top lane, the Mordekaiser, the Set. These are the two picks that I'm keeping my eyes on for Gim Goon and Zoom. Well, you get the Thresh here from Chris, one of his best champions by far. Uh, both these supports, actually, their Thresh is fantastic, but let's come back to that set conversation because JDG get what they want. And I like this now from JDG because they can ban away the likes of Renekton. Some of these picks, like the Aatrox, that can do pretty well into this set. And it means now Zoom has been set up for success in this top lane. This is where we'll start to see JDG go back to their old tricks of Kanavi playing towards that top side and setting up for Zoom to take over the game with these fantastic engagements. We definitely get more of that Mosh coming through here in game number two. Uh, FPX, though, they don't want to give the other hook champion over the side of Lumao. Lumao, one of the best roamers in the LPL, is not going to be enabled by a Blitzcrank while JDG are like, hey, we got to get rid of some top laners. And it's not only that Lumao has been a... Like, uh, such a strong roaming, he's also had such a diversity of champions that we often see JDG leave his pick until the second rotation so he can figure out, hey, do we want to go for a Yumi? Do we want to go for a Bard? Or even that Blitzcrank that has been banned away so sp or so often by FPX. The, the uh, Leona that he's played many, many times before. Actually, uh, one of his most played champions up there with the Thresh. Well, now has to go down the tier list a little bit here. Little Mal probably sad that Fiddlesticks is been remade and is the way it is. Lumao was our resident Fiddlesticks player. Are you Lumao? Is that what yeah, you're Yeah, I mean, look, at this point, he's going to say, okay, Nautilus instead, as quick pick there on the side of FBX. And I'm surprised that JDG left this Renekton open. This was the first thing that came oh, into my oh. head, just because of how well there he could have used the set matchup. Plus, it's been a Gimgoon favorite. It's his third most played champion. So this is where I'm expecting Gimgoon now to get one back over Zoom for that last game and have Gimgoon take over the top. Lane. But now we've got an interesting mid lane matchup where we have a Rise versus a Syndra. Yagao loves these spellcasters while Doombi and Tien. This is the pairing that really won over the hearts and minds internationally that in 2019 summer we saw a lot of. Doombi's rise is iconic. Tien's Lee Sin is also iconic. And together, they can die at the bottom. And that's what I expect in this game. Tien and Doinby are the strongest mid-jungle duo in the LPL. And they love to get themselves rolling off of Doinby's pressure into those dives. And when you have this Renekton in the top lane, that is the perfect setup for that opportunity. So I imagine that this is going to be where Doinby and Tien are putting the pressure, getting Zoom behind, and not allowing this Kanavi and Zoom combo to get itself rolling. We know as well that Tien, he'll spend his time a little bit mid here, freeing up Doinby, because against the Syndra, Hard to get free with all the wave flu that comes through, especially since Rise kind of sent to the gutter for quite a while and does struggle in this early laning phase. Yeah, I imagine that is where Tien is going to try and put his focus. And maybe that's the window that Kanavi needs to try and get something rolling elsewhere on the map. But Talk that's the yep. funny thing is that like when we look at this game, especially when you're looking at FPX in 2019, you never would have considered we wouldn't even touch an LWX and Crisp. But it's Loken, Lumao, Crisp and LWX have been left in their own little bubble. And I don't think we'll be seeing much of that activity down towards the bottom lane. Okay. I want to start looking though at how FPX can start to win out once they, if well, if they can get themselves rolling in this game. Doinby off in a side lane alongside Gimgoon on this Renekton. They can then start this 1-3-1 split push. Yeah. We return to Summoner's Rift. A game one win from JDG puts the momentum on them while FPX the world champions. Down a game means they need to step it up here in the semi-finals. Who will be facing off against Top Esports? That decision being made here tonight as we return for Game 2.
So we already touched on FPX, this potential 1-3-1 one, one in two rotations from Doinbeat thanks to his ultimate or Gimgoon on the flank. However, though, when we look over at JDG, they have a fantastic mid-game composition where you can use the strengths of Kanavi on this trundle, building up a lot of stats off that subjugate, with the Gao and Lokin hitting their strengths off of one to two items and try and punish anyone that gets caught out on the FPX side. I mean, you look towards Yagao, look at this rune taken in lane, the Comet. Wants to be dominant while Doombi goes back to phase rush here. Of course, we don't see Aftershock rise anymore because of how hard it is to enable it through the rune prison, but Dagda, Kanavi, and Zoom see a Gimgoon. They're going to start this invade off onto the blue buff. And now they can look to split the map. We talked Kanavi playing towards Zoom. Well, they're going to double down on that now. Kanavi steals away. Blue will wander over towards this Grump. Yes, Tian will get the Wolves, but that's not what Kanavi really cares about. And then we come back, and I know you're talking about topside here for Tien and how he can stop Kanavi. Is a bit of an engage down the bottom side. That's not going to mean much for two Aftershock supports. But Tien, then, if he's towards the bottom side, if he's splitting the map himself, well, hello, old style of FPX. True, but Logan and Lumao are already kind of expecting this. They are letting the wave push into them. But again, that's where it can get a little bit dangerous when we do see these dives. But Hysterics, you were showing your apathetics a little bit. Hello. With Doinby being pushed in by Yagao, it's going to make it a lot more difficult for him to get access at these early levels to make the plays towards the bottom. Especially when Trundle and Cinder is such an oppressive duo, right? Pillar goes up and you're put against the wall. Uh, and if done well, it's just like the Cinder has free access. Gimgoon taking a really bad trade right now. Gimgoon will eventually get control of this lane where he has full access to his kit and he hits that level four, level five. But yep. at this level one, level two, this lane is very zoom dominated on this set. So Gimgoon unfortunately set a little bit behind, but can heal up as this goes on. But watch Kanabi, he's coming towards his blue side. There's nothing there anymore. Grop here. Smite now comes down. Tien picks it up, but now he has to make the escape route. Does he have a ward available? Yes, he does. Wants to get over the wall. Good safeguard there before Lumao hops the anchor into it. So Tien's made his roam down towards this bottom side. The problem here, though, is the wave is pushing in the bottom, so he can't try and contest for Scuttle. Now Tien is making this roam across towards mid to secure the top lane Scuttle for himself. So it could be that maybe Tien is able to pick up both, but will end up backing away as go starts to fade in towards that top side brush, meaning that FPX know they've been spotted. Raids have stopped up here as well. They've gone the other way with Kim Kun pushing out Zoom. But you know that uh, Set has the HP regen in his kit. I want to come back though because Chris was roaming up as well. But a really well placed ward from JDG to spot them out means Yagao can toy around with that in the mid lane. He continues pushing. And now that Kanavi's there, it's good times ahead. And as Kanavi picks up the scuttle because of the roam from Crisp, uh, Lou Mao and Loken can shove in. He gets one scuttle, and it's actually going to be Kanavi who's able to pick up both of these scuttles. So once again, Kanavi getting an early lead off of these jungle camps, and Tien being left on the back foot. We'll have to see what he can do in this series, because already we're looking more towards Kanavi and his performance that started off here in game number one. He's up towards the top side yet again, going back to Tien's jungle just to go for the secondary split. And this is what we saw in our little bit of uh, video before the games was why we talk about Kanavi being a curry versus Tian being more of a supportive role. Even though Tian plays these early game curries, he's more focused on trying to get his laners ahead with Chris and Tian roaming towards mid to try and set up for Doinby. But Kanavi's more focused on these jungle camps and it's how he gets his leads. He's the highest CS as a jungler in the LPL and he's got a 280 gold lead of 15 minutes on average. And he's just making Tien run across the map. Tien wants to challenge and make sure that he can pick up some of his own camps, but he's left with the scraps. Kanavi picking up the wolf camp in a CS lead, as you can see. And now you've got the opportunity here for Kanavi to uh, go down towards this bottom side of the map if he wants. Yigel has just backed and has the teleport available. They can try and make the play on the bottom side and then move in towards this dragon. Or they can do the JDG special, which is play towards Zoom. Yeah. We're already thinking about it. Kanavi actually going to be heading towards mid. Kings are going down while Tien behind enemy lines taking Krugs himself. So we are going to be tracking the junglers for quite a lot here in this early game. And Doombi with that ward, enabling a bit more vision here for FPX. He was looking to try and get a roam off towards topside there. Because Yigao had backed and then come into the lane again, that was the one opportunity Doombi had to shove in that wave. But now, where Yigao has come back into lane, shoving in himself, JDG feel comfortable in picking up the first dragon in the game. 
especially with Lumel and Loken just getting a bit of a push here and equalizing the bottom lane. So early start again here for JDG in the form of about 300 gold plus the Ocean Dragon to kick things off. So nice start here for JDG. We're still seeing gold as all even at the moment. We aren't seeing the big diversity in CS numbers that we saw coming into game number one. So we'll have to look and see now if this fighting is really what's going to crack open the lead for either of these teams. I was going to say, the fact that Doombi even has a bit of CS, like the fact that Doombi is up there with Yigao is important. As... Okay, that's Dominus. And also the ultimate, the showstopper for Zoom, might stop the show for him in the top lane. He's going to flash away. And now Gimgun says howdy. And especially with Doombi roaming towards this top side, Zoom could be in trouble. Lumeo is backed and roamed top side though. This hasn't been spotted by FPX, so a dive could be a little bit precarious right now. If he goes into try, he will though. There's of course that little bit of cheap vision, but now with the control wall down, Gimgun says, okay, someone else is up here. And there is a little trick you can do with control wards where if you click on them fast enough and hover them, you can see who placed them. Ooh. So they will know that it's Lumeo that has been spotted on this top side, so FPX will realize the numbers advantage is in favor of JDG, especially with just a minute towards Rift Herald. JDG would love to make a play on this top side. Chris has roamed up as well. Over the wall is Gimgun. He doesn't have Dominus. Realm Wall's going to come in, but Scatter the Weak here slows him down. Now some early fighting. Ten goes in as well. Doombi flashes. They're looking for Kanavi, but first blood over to JDG. Now FBX without the man advantage are going to drop as well. Soon this time is the one who says, JDG, go. Sick him. It's a crocodile we need to kill. And Lumao with a great dredge line will pick up his second kill of the game. JDG do an amazing job to find success in that fight. And it all sparks off of Kanavi. Picking up those double scuttles in the early game gives him the level 6 advantage over TN. So when FPX all jump on towards the Trundle, he's too tanky, too much regen, they can't finish off the troll, and JDG turned the fight. But hang on, Chris has flash available, but a great pillar as Kanavi picks up the blue buff as well. Again, flexing over TN here in this series. Now with the 20 CS lead yet again. So you can see here, everyone jumps on towards Trundle. Still level five, but when that first kill comes through onto Doinby, ticks to level six, then gets the level advantage to get the Subjugate. And that's what made such a big difference here. And Subjugate is incredibly strong when you can focus onto one target, which is exactly what JDG do here. No split calls, it's focus onto Doinby, get rid of the Rise, he's the main source of damage, and then they can turn onto Tien and Gimgu. Zoom's face breaker there was legendary. That was great to watch. Picks up three people in the stun, remember, when you have an enemy on each side of that E ability. It means they stay in place and stay in place, FPX did, as they were stunned by JDG's early gameplay yet again. But this time with early kills, the momentum's already begun. It's a big 2k gold lead here at eight minutes. And now Zoom started taking control back at this lane. And the entirety of JDG are taking over. You can see bottom lane is pushing in aggressively. They want to start getting vision in this river for the dragon that's up in two moments or two minutes. And as well, Yigo picking up this blue buff will mean the pushing aggressively in this mid lane will start to go heavily in favor of JDG. And they again have more access to the map. We'll be now moving up though after pushing in the mid wave. This is what we wanted to see, but can he execute anything up in that top side against Zoom? Who doesn't have his flash available? It seems like no. He started walking and decided to go back as the wave wasn't in position. Zoom is playing this really well, playing far back, realizing that Gimgun doesn't have his flash. So as long as he remains at a slice and dice range, there's no real aggression that can come through from FPX. Arcanavi, though, spotted on this bottom side. So instead, FPX will turn over towards this Rift Herald. A scuttle for scuttle, or rather big scuttle in the form of Rift Herald here, started by Tien. Well, all that control comes through and all the vision control towards that top side really enables this. So at least FPX this time around are getting something because it seems like they've already been shut out by JDG and they need something big to pull back this early game. And the thing here is that JDG had already backed away expecting to move towards this Rift Herald, but slightly too late to the play. So it means they don't have Loken in a position to push on towards this bottom side with Lu Mao when Chris Brome's up. So no turret place traded for this objective. Okay, important to note. LWX is going to be sitting down here by himself. Aphelios thinking it out with the wave. As I'm looking towards timers, Dagda. 30 seconds till this dragon coming up. Also note that the Rift Herald in the hands of TN has often been placed down. 
to start the dragon. And if I'm FPX, I don't want to try and fight with this dragon. We're waiting for okay. a later game scenario where Fidelius has picked up his, his crit items. You've got Doimbi who's going to be working through a lot of his items as well. And that's when you'll see FPX be at the strongest. Right now, JDG with access to the bullet time, oh. the unleashed power, they will quickly win out in these dragon fights. That was blind. Yigao just knew that Doombi's going to be backing somewhere away. Stops his back. And now Dragon, no matter what they were thinking, is definitely going to be JDG. Especially with Zoom backing away, he's got the teleport available. Just started that Cutlass, or just finished that Cutlass even. So now JDG are starting to look towards Zoom in a more of a split push capacity. They want him to be able to fight against Gimgoon. The first steps in that is getting this Blade of the Rune King. But this is a long road for Zoom to try and overcome because this matchup doesn't really start to turn around until much later in the game. You're talking about that 25 minute mark. But at least with that kill, he can get there sooner, right? We've already seen the Cutlass, as you mentioned there before. So we'll keep our eyes peeled towards the top lane builds. As Doombi is going to be TPing only back to wave. He's got the Rod of Ages now. So he'll start stacking that one away and... I guess if we're talking about Doombi, in game one, the Kassadin had its potential. It got to the late game point, but could never triumph over JDG. Here, this game seems a bit more stable, but yet again, we're at a point where JDG are controlling this early game, and we need to see what the Herald does to pull FPX back in. Well, FPX have an easier job of trying to enact their game plan, but we are going to wait and see as TN... Okay, this, He's starting to make this a is play. part of the game plan then, Dagda? As we Definitely see. is. We talked about playing through Gimgoon on this top side, shutting down Zoom early, and that's what FPX are trying to do. Here. At least to zone him away with turret plating going down. I mean, that's important. The solo lane is finding a bit of a lead. You gal. He says, let's go towards the top side. Lumao and Kanavi slowly roaming up as well. Herald going to be dropped here. Your gal looking to poke them down, but turret almost goes down, but the plating, that's the important part here but no first turret yet taken of the game. But it's being traded by Kanavi in the mid lane, so Kanavi on this trundle will get a lot of resources for himself. But a lot already. The, it's more important that it's going towards Gimgoon and Doimbi. These are the guys who really want to see starting to shine on FPX. So we talked about what the game plan from FPX is. Well, it is getting Gimgoon ahead, but also looking towards these flanks and team fights. And that's why I think this time around, FPX have an easier time to do so. Okay. When you don't have Zoom on this Gangplank, you don't have this great kite back ability on JG, JDG's end of things. They ha don't have the chains of corruption. Loken is not able to provide as much disengage. This is where FPX in a flanking position can do a lot more work just because JDG can't get back as easily. <laughs> when we don't go to 40 minutes in the game where Zoom is a GP who's been farming for 40 straight minutes as well. I think it's going to make a very different dynamic, especially for Kim Gooners. Uh, we are just looking across the rift because turret plating, ladies and gentlemen, will be disappearing in 30 seconds. But I want you to keep your eyes on some important timers. We've got the third dragon and the rift element here this game as the mountain up in 2 minutes 30. FPX right now, obviously, there's no priority over that, but they're hiding between vision, looking for Yagao, who puts down a good wall. Will dodge away from the Sonic Wave, but Crisp is here. Kiki, they're going to flash forward. Yagao matches. Doombi wants to go at him. Yagao flasher with the faster with the flash than Doombi was with the room prison. So Yagao just about managing to escape. But you can see again, FPX wanting to roam towards Doombi. Get this guy unlocked. Super carry Doombi is how FPX have started to get their leads in so many scenarios, but hasn't been able to work so hot for them in this series. You go through turret plating on the bottom of your screen as Roll Wars going to come up. We don't have time for that because Dominus using the top lane. Showstopper is available for Zoom as well as Flash. He's trying to use it to get on out, but Doombi's not going to give him the pathway. Flash again, Wait still available for Zoom. Looking to turn this into a one versus two. Kim Kim dodges it though. Nicely done here. He survives and Doombi picks up his first kill. Zoom tried to call it. He tried to figure out where Kim Goon was going to dice to, but unfortunately doesn't read him well enough. Now Doombi un Locked in the top lane, we picked up first turret for FPX. 250 gold in the back pocket, that first turret you mentioned, 500 gold now. The difference here will be depending on if Loken can find this turret, which, yes, he will. So it'll kind of go back to a thousand gold, but FPX is starting to claw their way back into this one. Key resources, as you said before, Dagda, on the people they need. And Doimbi is calling on the world to ban away this rise. This has been his pocket pick for so long. Haven't seen a huge amount of it in the spring split, but now coming into our playoffs, it is solidified win after win for FPX. Now Doimbi, having gotten out of this mid lane, is helping Gimgoon in the top side. First tower goes down. Now we can start to have more activity around the map 
and see if he can again continue the streak forward for FPS. Also, like I said in game one, the, the build that was started out of nowhere, where Doombi came on in, as you can see by that cloth armor, was the Righteous Glory third here on the rise. Doombi is the person that made famous this big third item power spike that makes the rise super fast here with the, uh, with the phase rush. I think he's actually going towards Ninja Tabby with this oh, cloth armor, but I don't we'll fully see. agree with it. I'm going to hang on for one moment here. Okay, I'm with you. I'll hang as well. So, I, I would actually prefer to see the Merc Threads in this scenario, not because there's as much CC. That's not really the big call. There's a good bit there, but it's more Kanavi will steal away those stats, so the UC get out of the Ninja Tabby isn't as high, and Join B needs to run away from the CC. But I'm going to have to interrupt you, Dagda, because a kick out here for Kanavi in the pit. Dragon is secured. The depth charge. Gonna be used for a three-man knockup. JJ still wanna follow as the death sentence lands here. LWX poking them away in Yagao. Looking over as Lumao flashes over the wall. Kanavi's gonna be Sonic Wave, remember. No kick available. The showstopper with the bullet time. The face breaker almost kills. LWX with the comet survives. Oh my god, JDG are ruthless, and FBX are lucky they got out. And that's the engages we talked about from Zoom. The face breaker nearly takes down LWX. He will escape with just an inch of his life, but now JDG can get this mid lane turret, fall back towards that Rift Herald, although FBX will be looking to stomp their way back onto the map and refight for that objective. Now that was the mosh pit, Dagda. That's what we're talking about, and the coordination in it is quite incredible to watch. So even though JDG don't find the kill, as you're also mentioning there, the push on the turret, however, not taken down just yet. And it's JDG using their early game lead in that mosh pit to be bigger than FPX so they can bully them around. However, not quite big enough yet, FPX to escape. Now we look towards this Rift Herald with no Showstopper available, no Subjugate available for Navi. We'll have to see how they're going to face up. Well, he's walking into River. Christmas here. Death Sentence lands. Just again, the box is down with the play. He flashes away. As going be pokes him in. On the Rift Herald, it looks like FBX aren't going to get contested while Chris is zoning them away. But Doom coming in for a massive flank yet again. Face Breaker flashed away from He doesn't have his ulti. 200 years worth of Shuriken into Kanavi on the backside. But FBX get the objective and once again on low health bars manage to get away. They needed to find a engage onto a key carry like LWX or Doinby. JDG were trying to fight using the unleashed power from Yigao that was still available, <laughs> but we're quite hip to do it. I don't think we've seen that interaction before. No. <laughs> I uh I totally forgot. If she can do it with Heimerdinger turrets, why can't she do it with the Felios turrets? As Yigao's probably sick of the champion as well. <laughs> I have never seen that interaction. I, I have never se met someone, like anyone in our in our gorgeous chat at the moment, that has said that a Felios does not feel like uh, 200 years worth of, of pain and misery. But I'm going to drop it there. I know. Like, I apologize. I do this a lot as JDG. This is good. Pushing the turret. They're now up by about 3,000 gold. It's going to be spend more. I mean, Zoom's pushing in this top lane. You do have Gimgun here to try and help, but the second he shows, JDG yes, will go. And he's locked up. Christmas dead. Walking up to the turret, the disrespect. Okay. And that's a good okay. Hang on, we're going to have to pause here. Tien goes in, he wants to kick flash, but he can't manage to find it. On top of Logan, Scatter the Week going to miss as well. They found the support. And now Gimgun is going to be running as well on top of Yagao. It's three versus four in the mid lane, but they've peeled off. Doobie flashed in. A double kill for the rise. Make it a triple from zero to hero. Now for the four and one rise. Gimgun makes the great call of sacking the top lane turret to get the fight in the mid. Now at Rift Herald, they can crack open this tier one. I wouldn't be surprised if they push forward on towards the tier two, but with the Baron up in 35 seconds, they want to back away spend their gold and make sure that they're on the map to make sure they're not losing the purple worm. But we're at a point now at 19 minutes in the game where Doombi is fed. Doombi's absolutely fed. Talk about the Baron coming up. The Rift Herald as it gets another charge. Also reminds me of the other objective in the Dragon. It started with Chris just getting destroyed. So look at all everything JDG used in that engage though. You've got depth charge, bullet time, unleash power gone. So FPX isn't worried about being burst out. So he's able to go in aggressively. Gimgun we talked about sacking that tower and roaming over. Fantastic call from Gimgun. Sets up the rest of this play here. And no kite back for JDG in this game as easily. They're able to get picked off by the chasing members of FPS. Even in skirmishes, right? We talked about Gimgun being the, you know, one of the better team fighting 80 uh, top laners. Oh, sorry, one of the best team fighting top laners here in the LPL. Also great at skirmishing, as you can see. They're good positioning from the top laner who this time around actually gets to play more League of Legends. 
Uh, even being 0-1-3 and three here with the Black Cleaver versus that Blade of the Ruin King set as you're looking at them now on the sideline. So let's talk about the 1-3-1. One, one. Oh, hang on, Zoom. Looking for a fight. Yeah, we are definitely talking about them. Dominic's going to be used into the wall for the showstopper. The slice and dice out of there. Alt for alt here. Want to look at Joinby, though. He's the big carry right now for FTX, and he's the one who's split pushing off in this top lane. So Gimgoon, yes, was bullied out by Zoom in that scenario, but still, it's going to be Gimgoon favorite for the moment. We're going to the mid lane, because TP, FTX, say it's time to fight again. Gimgoon has home guards, but... That ain't gonna be a flank. Instead, five people are mid while Zoom's pushing. Zoom with no TP. Baron. Baron's on the menu. Yeah, Zoom has got to walk. He doesn't have the teleport up and available. FPX now trying to draw Zoom out of that bottom lane successfully. But as long as JDG can force FPX back, they can turn towards Dragon. Their sentence on to the support once again. He's gonna use the stone play, but knocked on up. Crisp is dead once again, but is his life worth it? Four versus five with Zoom now joining the play. The difference here, though, is that Zoom is here for JDG's fight. It's five versus four, which will turn it JDG favored. Now JDG can crack open this mid lane turret. But look at the pings. FPX are looking to call themselves and go towards Baron. Did they walk over ward? I don't think so. No. Gun is moving back to the mid lane. There's four people, rather three here for FPX. Kanavi over the side is going to drop a ward at 6k. FPX need to back away from this one. Join me. Really greeds it though. Scatter the weak. Going to get him to half health, but he survives. And almost gets punished hard. Zoom is able to solo out this dragon. Blade of the Rune King means he'll be, well, already going to be fine. It's not exactly tough for a top laner to take that down. But JDG do a good job of calling FPX because a lot of teams don't realize when FPX is making one of these cheeky plays. JDG, though, got wise to it and will be able to get them away. Kim wants to go over the wall here. Zoom, however, has control of this dragon as a smite. So, no way, Jose. JDG, one mountain away from Soul here in this game. Well, FPX finally reset, and after all is said and done, JDG now hold the cards in this game once again. We return to the mid lane. And we said that this is when JDG are at their strongest, the two item point. You've got the Ludens and Oblivion Orb there for you, Gao. You've got the Essence Reaver and the Infinity Edge for Loken. These are the main components that you want for this JDG mid game team fight. So JDG looking to extend at the moment, but as long as FPX can keep these side lanes in check, make sure that you, Gao and Zoom aren't able to properly join in to set up for the likes of Loken. Well, then FPX can get to the late game where they can win out. Let me reiterate as well, of course. But JDG go towards soul, soul point. We get to the point where, okay, if JDG can extend this mid-game of theirs that you talk so heavily about, then with that extra tankiness on members like the Trundle, the Set, the Nautilus, uh, it's going to be pretty influential to find these fights and survive longer, just to be frank. Especially for the likes of Zoom, who wants to try and get multiple haymakers off in these fights. He gets so much use out of these shields. Um, we'll have to see, though, if he's going to be Chris. able to get to that stage, though, as you can see Kanavi and Yago pushing in this top lane. They want to try and crack open these inhib or not inhibitor turrets, tier two towers, so then it's easier for them to get vision control for these objectives. Look at the bottom wave. Doombee's yeah. just left the first wave and is pushing in this second one as uh, it's going to be crashing in two different areas here against Doom. And this is why we highlighted Doombee on the side lane pressure, because no one can deal with him right now. He's far too large. You've no magic resist on Zoom. Yigao has been completely, not bullied out, but unable to stop Doimbi on these roams. And now Doimbi can take over just on this side lane. We're getting a comparison between him and Yigao here. This game, Sonya's Hourglass has been picked up, as you can see. So third item there with the Merc Treads you wanted to see picked up alongside it. And normally this is a place where we'd see the Righteous Glory. And as Doimbi has explained in the past, it's about that mid-game tempo swing. But he's going for more scaling here in the Sonya's Hourglass itself. And I would have loved for Yigao to go towards more scaling. Picking up the Morello Nomicon delays the likes of that Rabidon Death Cap. It means that he doesn't have the same burst potential I would have loved to see him go for, especially with the tanky and the health stats that Doimbi has. Plus, when you look at LWX, if you can pick him off quickly and burst him out, it'll be a JDG favorite fight no matter what happens. I wonder what happens here, though, because Doombi is going to be found out by Zoom, the showstopper used, but that's the whole combo. Yeah. Haymaker's going to be coming through shortly, but Doombi trying to cut this one out. Here it comes down the middle. He goes golden in the nick of time, though. Flashes away from the showstopper again, though. You can't face break what isn't dead. Doombi with the one-on-one. -on -one. And we expected this already, and now LWX pushing in this mid lane. JDG are starting to crumble under the pressure. Crispo in no man's land. 
I mean, he's walking between Gim Goons near him though, but the rest of FPX are coming in. It dodges away from the dredge line of Lumal. LWXT and all together. Fox is going down. TP from Doombi. JDG walked into this trap. The death sentence doesn't connect, but now Doombi, the trap is set for him for Yagal. But the kickback on to three. Season 10 hits again. LWX moves into the middle. JDG are low. Kanabi trying to carry it with Lumal, but there's no more damage. All of a sudden, it's another triple and an FBX win in a fight. Doing B moves in towards the fight, does sacrifice his life, but the unleashed power from Yagel went into the rise, who was already going to be a non-factor with how low his health bar was. Meant that they couldn't get the burst onto LWX, couldn't stop Gimgoon from taking over that fight. And you can see here, Chris with a great turnaround, baits JDG in right as the teleport comes down. And even though he doesn't get the hook onto Yagel, when that Unleashed Power is done for, who do you try and get the burst out onto oh now? Oh my god. Tien, again, fantastic performances on this Lee Sin. Bullet time interrupted by Gim Goon, and it was JDG with no top laner there for them, losing the 4v5. Triple kill over to, to Tien, so well deserved from that three-man kick. Oh, most played Lee Sin here in the split, and you can see why. I mean, we saw it on the world stage. He then got put up there when he won the World Championship last year as one of the best Lee Sins here in the world. And we are seeing the better side of Tien here in this series, in this second game against Kanavi as FPX. However, cannot get caught out in the mid lane. JDG still with a 1k gold lead. Still a Baron on the map and still a soul to play towards. So if FPX want to take control of the second game, they have to find another big fight in front of this upcoming objective. And if JDG could find a front-to-back fight here, it'd be pretty heavily in their favor. And that's why you can see them as this five-man unit moving through. But FPX want to get on towards a flank. Chris with a hook, Sonic Wave does connect, but Loom out, tanky enough with the stone plate still available. So keep your eyes on Gimgoon here. He's going to try and get up and wrap around to get access into that back line. We talked about Gimgoon, his back line destruction. He can most certainly do that with the items he's picked up on this Renekton. But he's spotted out on a ward here. Gonna be clearing that one away as Dragon started up by JDG. Soul on the line. The Death Sentence connects onto Zoom. Loom out goes in. Is this the kill? Yes, one of his fortune. So now the Mountain Soul and the kill onto Tien. FBX with a numbers disadvantage. LDX tries to get the poke over the wall, but Loom out flashes on top of him. The Dark Passage to save the day. LWX getting zoned away. No Sephirim for you, sir. It's only severing the ties. As you want me to carry this fight back in a choke. One versus four. I don't think so. The rise big, but even as he goes golden, your gal's waiting. Doombi will take one to the deathbed with him. But meanwhile, Loken makes the ace complete with our third triple of this game too. Loken was huge in that fight. Get the bullet time off that tears through FPX's health bars, but also manages to flash forward, kills LWX, sets up the damage onto Doinby, and finishes off Chris. And suddenly, JDG have the wheels turning in their favor this game. Tien walking up towards the Baron. But JDG looking to reset, bait this one in, and go once again. These fights are on a knife's edge. You go. Yoink. Not able to get it. But this is JDG playing their damnedest in these fights to take them all. And watch here. You can see Loken, this massive bullet time thanks to that depth charge. And although he moves away from Gimgoon, the damage has already been done. Crisp is incredibly low. Lu Mao flashing over oh, onto LWX. Now watch Loken here. Flashing forward onto LWX, finishes off the Aphelios, and then with the CC chain that can come through from the rest of JDG, they're able to chase down onto Doinby. JDG played this fight so well. You know that Drake meme, man? Loken on top esports, nah. -uh. Loken on JDG, that's the one, baby, pointing straight towards him. 6 1 and 2. This is his game now against LWX. And again, for JDG, they have the gold lead, they have the momentum back in their swing. Baron sitting there. They have the Mountain Soul in their back pocket. They've got an Elder on the horizon as well. And for FBX, now it comes down to this. A lot used in that last fight, though. Flashes burn galore from Loken and Lumao. Still no flashes onto Kanabi oh, Yagao. Blind. It's all about Zoom. Maybe he can find disengage if FPX are going to contest. Spotted out with the Scrying Orb. TP going to be used here. That is Gim Goon coming in for the flank. Doombi in the midway, moving himself. Baron getting low. FBX have to make the move. It's up to Tien for the still. 2,700 is behind the pit they stand. JDG pull off the Baron. It resets a little, but they're going back. Damage still there. Sonic Wave. Keeps it from resetting again. Baron goes back up. 
the place up. JDG can't contest or continue on towards the Baron because of Gimgoon's threat on the side lane. Flashing early up as well for him, so they decide to back away. It will give FPX control of this vision. So JDG teleport burned, and now Doin B with his own teleport can keep a lot of pressure on the side lane and allow FPX to play towards the Baron. I guess when you're a Rise, you're an Aphelios, if you can pull JDG off that Baron, if you can keep this time going, then you find that fight with the Rise fully enabled. You find the Aphelios big five-man ulti that we saw before in the trade top side. This is what I love about Gimgoon, though consistently getting into these flank positions, creating pressure in these fights and hard choices for the enemy team. And when JDG are trying to rush this, they've invested resources like that teleport into making this play happen. You need Gimgoon burning his own teleport to keep JDG in check and make sure that they're not pushing their advantage even further, as minuscule as a right is right now. I just love that TPs on the top lanes are in the exact same cooldown pretty much as well, right? We've also got Yigao and Doombi who are going to be synchronized when Yao, Yagao gets his TP up. And a game that's about the Dumpling Brother duo mixed with Loken now. Continues to go forward for two minutes on the Elder coming up. Yagao will struggle in the side lane against Doinbi though. Okay. Banshee's Veil completed for Doinbi, so that initial burst isn't going to be anywhere near as heavy as you would like to. Compounded with that Seraph's Embrace, the Shields, the Zonya's Hourglass, Yagao is going to lose out if he goes up 1v1 against Doinbi. So JDG, you can see grouped as a five-man unit, trying to force FPX to burn their own teleports and make sure that they can at least weather this tempo advantage that FPX have gained. But you can see, like, the QSS from Loken as well, just to come back, as we see Loken really going against Crisp and Doombi's room prison. Uh, and I bet you LWX versus Yigao, if Yigao ults him, he's pretty much dead. I bet he hates that, even with a Phantom Dancer. Is Gimgoon is being a sneaky snake. The Croc wants to bring oh, no. in the Magician. And this is a play they can go for because you got Doinby's TP. Two people committed to this bottom side. If they kill Yigao, will still allow for a 4v4 at the Baron. This is so smart by FPX, using the teleport advantage in their favor. Doombi now shows himself. You talked about it. Yigao's going to back away from that wave. TP being used. JDG want to force this one back up. They're calling the bluff. Now you've got Doinby to use his teleport. Now JDG front to back fight once again. But Gimgoon has to walk up. It is a four versus five until they get into the pit. 5k now. Gimgoon joins. All members are here. 3k. Aphelios in the back of it as well. Tien looking for the steal. They want a 50 50 into the pit. And he steals it. FPX with the Baron here. Zoom low in the pit wall. In out goes Chris. Tien tries to escape. Flashes over for the Unleashed Power. Gets him four for five. But FPX with Baron. And, and now going towards the Elder. They don't have a uh, jungler, though, so they need to back away. Look at where the waves are for JDG, though. Even though they've got the man advantage, they can't try and get anything on the map right now because of the wave state. So JDG will be able to push in okay. and then look towards Elder Dragon, but Tien would not be up for this Elder. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I saw them going bot, and I'm like, oh boy. Well, let's, let's cake and eat it too, huh? Baron in hand, Elder spawning, though. And we're still at that one fight capacity. There's no unsealed spell books this game. This is just Kanavi with his smite. This should be JDG. Woken with BT. Look at that shield, man. As Gimgoon around the backside here. Dragon is getting pushed on down. You can see LWX doesn't have his ulti available. Here comes one from Woken, though. That zones him away. Elder picked up by Jingdong Gaming. It's only about 30 seconds difference between the Baron and the Elder buff, though. So. The FPX will be able to use this Baron buff to slow down the advance of JDG. So it's going to make it very difficult for anything to be gained for JDG off of this Elder play. But you see here, Tien, on the Lee Sin, even with the level disadvantage, able to pick up the Smite and get that Baron so crucially in favor of FPX. Feels like a really early Smite from Kanavi as well. So all that's said and done, the jungler who had a level disadvantage to pick it up there from Tien has put FBX, as you said, in a really good position as Realm Warp towards the turret. Bring the minions. It's a party at this inner. Because JDG have committed to the bottom side. Doinby's trying to accelerate himself in this top lane to make this an uneven trade for JDG. But with the Baron buff, you can see how quickly this ride pushes it. However, JDG with the pressure from Elder in their hand are going to keep going forward. Doinby is back though, Zoom has his teleport available, so now JDG looking to try and use this Elder buff, but minions cleared out so easily by FPX, JDG can't do very much. 
Zoom has the TP if this evolves into anything else. Ward put down JDG, however. I'm gonna keep the push up. They're waiting for the next wave. JDG moving forward. Look at Lumeo trying to get in position for a hook. That's the there teleport to keep the minions alive. This is fantastic from JDG. Okay, they're gonna take the inhibitor and the inhibitor turret as well. Seems like this push just goes forward and JDG are like, let's end. Okay, FPX still have the Baron buff available. This could be greedy. Kanavi gets boned out a little bit there. And the defense solid for now. We are approaching that point where FPX can win team fights. JDG, this is incredibly risky. Doimbi does a lot. LWX has got a bunch of crit in his kit right now. It's funny, this is what happened during the regular season game number one. JDG went too far and FPX punished them. First Nexus turret is going to drop down though. The bullet time doesn't really hit anyone. Off on the side, Tien finds himself into Yagao but doesn't make the engage. Scatter the weak to zone out. And JDG know better this time around. They've learned from their mistakes. They're going to back away after taking everything else. They got the Nexus turret though, which is... Oh, oh. they're not done. They're not done this time. They want more. Okay, I think they're done. I think they're okay, looking done, for FBX to, okay. to walk around the So corner. here we go. I like that they've got the Nexus turret here because what it does is create even more pressure on that bottom side. You can't have the, the Nexus turrets firing away in these super creeps and keeping your Nexus safe for a little bit longer. Now Gimgoon or Doinbee will permanently need to be on this bottom side to deal with these super creeps. And although we don't have the likes of the Baron up for another two minutes, it'll still be that inhibitor down when that Baron spawns with super creeps potentially pushing into the bottom side. Still with JDG at this game, they still have the gold lead at this point as well, right? The Mountain Soul we talked about, the Elder now expiring, Baron coming up in two minutes, Elder in three. So we put that timer on our clock once again. And FPX not out of this one just yet, but for JDG, things are looking good. And look at the items that FPX have picked up right now. We talked about LWX nearly picking up his last item. He started work on that one. You're looking towards Doimbi as well, who's managed to hit full build. Yep. This rise is massive. So when JDG were building this pressure off of the mid-game spike that they had, now FPX, if they can find the fight in their favor where they can get a flank for Gimgun and Doimbi, JDG will be the ones in trouble. Just note though that LWX isn't towards that last item himself where he would like to be here. But what seems to be the final fight coming up, where Logan with the BT has all items accounted for here. JDG hovering around Baron for now. Scuttlecraft has been secured by FPX. They're looking for the bait. This is something JDG will do a lot. They'll pretend that they've gone over towards the Baron to get vision down and hide in this bush just off of mid lane. However, there's wards in the pit over towards Baron, so FPX will know that this is going to be happening. And even having that Scuttle Crab, JDG, you can't fool FPX. Gives that time for LWX to get closer and closer to what seems to be a Mercurial Scimitar coming alongside uh, the other items already completed. Has now the QSS. Doimbi has his teleport, split pushing in this bottom lane. True. Nobody from JDG has their own teleport available. So Doimbi's free to go for this. Just but JDG again. are just grouping to push. They call in it saying we can push faster on an inhibitor turret than Doimbi can on a tier This two. happens every time Doimbi's in a side lane and JDG say we make the proactive call. Kim has been spotted out on this flank here and the death sentence connects onto a minion instead. Inhibitor now exposed. The good news for FPX, though, is they've shoved that minion wave fully in on the bottom side, so it'll be a long time before Super Creeps are knocking on the door of their Nexus. It's about buying time for FPX to fight for this Baron. But now, with Baron here, started up by JDG and the ward denied, it's going down rapidly fast. Okay, we're going to bring three people in. That's not a good ulti from Doombi. There goes the jungle GA. Keep Goon's coming in now. They're at a disadvantage with the flash away already. And FPX are walking into this trap. Tien kicks him away while LWX gets the space created. But they turn on Chris. And FPX just send people in to die. Doing B's ultimate was a death sentence. Now you go playing what? keep away with FPX trying to stop them from backing using the pressure of the super creeps in the bottom lane. But there goes Baron. There we go. JDG. Now you've got no. No inhibitor on the bottom side. Inhibitor without a tower in the mid lane. This is JDG stamping control once again. And that's a move out of FPX we've seen during the regular season. Where FPX, they had these games or two that looked a bit uncoordinated. Where communication wasn't that world championship level of 2019. 
I love that JDG are keeping you going, Lumo, on the map here to make sure FPX can't turn and try and rush down this Elder Dragon. Now you've got a barrened up JDG that are turning towards this Elder Dragon. It's a one-two combo that they can use to close out this game. Okay, it's going to be started up here. The Mountain sold up team are drawing in FPX, everyone alive. Chris not with the fight just yet. Look at the super creeps though. JDG can just play with Elder while the super creeps are putting work onto the Nexus turrets of FPX. They just let it reset. They're pulling in the inhibitor under fire. Someone has to go back and respond and it's Gimgun. And so now JDG say, let's start this up. Tien needs another steal here, but a scatter the weak from Yagao unleashed power. Tien goes golden, but meanwhile that'll be fine. The ball time almost finishes him off. As Dragon resets once again, Redemption coming in to heal them up. But over the wall, the poke comes through. Kanavi has the flash. He still has five, but there goes Tien. He wanted a steal. But again, Yagao just dictated that fight. JDG play the mind game with FPX, making them force out the tough decisions, and unfortunately FPX, when it comes to the crunch, they fail. Setting up for the barrel of a 2-0. Tien now 35 seconds till he comes back to summon his rift. They have a four versus five. They're running at this one to end. There's only a single Nexus turret. Why wouldn't you go for this Kim Goon with the flank for the last time? They flash on in. It's Loom out to start off. And immediately Chris is deleted once again. The showstopper in the back line onto Doombi. And he's not pumping out damage. So that's the win. They unleash the Dragon Fury again with the second triple here over to Loken. He makes it a quadra. And they make that match point here against Fun Plus Phoenix. JDG with their eyes on the prize. They don't even try and get the Penta onto Tien with the respawn. They have bigger things in their vision, and it is putting themselves to 2 0 against FPS. I mean, in the fury of that game, we moved very far I apart. Know, yeah. <laughs> but this is now match point against the world champions. The potential of getting knocked out in semi finals for FBX is not good enough. But for JDG, claps all around, man, because this series is looking pretty easy for them. And they've done it in two different ways. Game one was this pure macro focused gameplay, taking yep. turrets, using the pressure that they're able to create off of these poke champions. Game number two was, we're going to fight you with this mid game focused composition and they were winning out time and again, calling FPX into making these tough choices that they couldn't find their success. In a series like this, every cog has to be turning, right? Yeah. Every player has to be on the same page and on point. There were times in that game where we explained that FBX didn't seem like they were as coordinated. So the earlier fights went really nicely, but then we got towards that realm warp behind Pit on a ward as well. That just kind of surprised the heck out of me. But then JDG, on that note, all the cogs were turning because individual performances out of Zoom, Yagao, Kanavi again, Lumao on Nautilus looked great, and Loken too. And it, but it's coming back to FPX not being able to play their style of game in this early stage. They're not getting Doinby out and roaming. They're not going for these dives either top or bottom. We saw eventually Doinby get out of lane, but the problem is at that stage, JDG had already got a 2,000 gold lead. FPX need to be setting the ball rolling a lot earlier, and JDG are doing a great job of denying that with Kanavi having control of this jungle, getting in, stealing away camps from TN, making these gank plays happen. The double scuttle into that Rift Hero fight, even though getting those two scuttles you never really think will mean very much, really made the factor in Trundle hitting that level six, turning that fight around, and again, the snowball coming through from JD. Because this is time to harp on FPX. This is not the World Championship squad. This is not the quality of 2019 FPX whatsoever. This is a much lower form, and a form that is now going to have to reverse sweep JDG, who look unstoppable in this series, who look ready to take us to a grand final where we have a brand new LPL champion. So one step away for JDG, now it's about crossing that line. And JDG have been unstoppable with this roster. This is now 18 games undefeated That's with right. Zoom in the team. JDG have been full stop, end of story, better than every team they've came up against. And once again, they're proving it against FPX. They look even stronger than they did in their Miracle Runners 8th seed last year with Imp. And I'm going to say, Loken filling the shoes of the original lineup bottom lane that came through. Remember, when QG turned into JDG, it was Loken and Lumao that were that bottom lane duo, now reunited. It's good to see that they're performing well. They're really syncing up nicely. 
especially when Loken was having struggles with his lane performance on top esports. Now coming into this where he's getting very little resources dedicated to him, himself and Lu Mao are just syncing up so well and a lot of those issues we saw from Loken have been shored up, which is why JDG are able to play this style where yep. they're so aggressive towards the top side of the map. They're finding success with the Dumpling Brothers and Zoom and Yigao and Kanavi, the secret sauce we talked about, has been the big factor for JDG in this series. I think that's holding it all together and we saw it down the bottom. I mean, that was a really good example on the bottom side. Lumao flashes over the wall, so does Zoom. They all collapse, they get in that mosh. And that's when they really look so potent. And I think this series is showing us that JDG, regular season performance is translating to playoffs. And even though they lost against FBX in the regular season, you wouldn't think that's the case with the way they're going up against And the funny thing is for when Zoom came back onto the JDG lineup, they averaged a 2,200 gold lead at 15 minutes. Oh. That has been almost exactly what we have seen in both of these series at the 15 minute mark. JDG have been doing a fantastic job of every single small advantage they get, exploding it to far bigger reaches. You're looking towards the side of JDG on match point at the moment. Uh, before we do go to a break, we have to look at how FPX bring this one back, Dagda, because things looking grim. Tien even on Lee Sin can't find the window. Doombi on his famous fries didn't have the same impact. They were just getting red. I think it's time to go back to maybe some of the dark technologies or at least something yep. that will give Dime B control of this mid lane. So far, we haven't seen it. The Syndra has been picked up by Yigao and the reason the likes of the Syndra is so strong or even the likes of Zoe for Yigao is incredibly strong is push advantage, consistently shoving in that wave. And it's funny to see that Dime B, even though he's got this massive champion pool, hasn't got the likes of Zoe in his kit. So with Yigao stealing away the Syndra, it feels like that push advantage so far this series has always been going in favor of JDG. He does play Syndra though, so let's see what we yep. come forward to because 2-0 start here for JDG on the verge of being 3-0 to the world champions. We'll see what happens going forward into game number three.